Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is mark the positions of the bridge feet presently. And I've torn some tape. Okay. Now, I'm going to remove the woof eliminator, or woof tone eliminator. Now, the next thing I want to do is measure the current string height at the bridge. At the E and the... So this is the fingerboard height right here. So I want to mark the bottom. Okay, now what I want to do is put the... So I want to put it on the side of the tail piece. Because the sound post is on this side of the bridge, so that would give it good support until I nudge it over and kind of center it and then tighten it so it raises up so it's taut enough to kind of support the strings on the A and the C Okay, then I want to loosen the strings a bit so I can pull the bridge down. Of course, loosening these Whitner pegs, you, it goes very, very little when you're turning the pegs a little at a time. Loosen it quite a bit actually. Ooh, I heard it there. Oh, there you go. Okay, got the bridge out. Now I want to move this over to the bridge position. Oh, that's easy. So it'll be approximately where the bridge is. Of course, it's not as wide as the bridge. And I want to have it be vertical. Okay, that'll be good. Then I can tighten it, tension it up, just to keep tension on there so the sound post won't fall over. Let's see what's happening with the sound post. That looks good. There's one thing I definitely do not want for my sound post to fall over. Okay, now. I'm going to stop it there for a second while I move the cello. Okay, now, working on the bridge. First, according to the Strobel book, the spacing between the a string and the C string should be 47. So what I'm going to do is use my dividers to see what I've got presently. 
Okay, so I've got I'm going to make this easier to I have forty eight. Okay, so I have forty eight. So if I used forty eight well, I want to do 47. See, that's what. So 47 divided by 3. Divided by 3 equals 15.66666. Okay, 15.6. So I want to leave the A and the D, and maybe even the G, where they are. Okay, that's about 15.5, right? It's about there. Let's see what I've got. Oh yeah, I can move it over a millimeter. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave the A and the D and the G strings where they are, and I can afford to move this C string slot probably almost a millimeter over because see where that uh, point is it's at the edge of my slot actually which is about a millimeter over from where i originally had slot for the c string and that will help and this is about 15.75 millimeters so they're not exactly equal to each other that that one's the same just the a and the d for some reason, I spaced it further apart, but that's all right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just sand to the bottom of that slot. I think I'll use the disc sander. Okay, I wanna use the hand file to finesse it, and so I have the back side down, which is the side that's perpendicular to the top, and I want to uh, kind of smooth the curve between the D and the C, I mean the G and the C string because I didn't sand anywhere near the I just sanded enough to get rid of that slot so I want to uh, make that curve a little more gradual That's good, that's better actually. The basic, here's the template that I made from the book. And I place it, yeah, and that fits that curve better. Actually, I kind of had this part a little uh, flat. And maybe that's why I was hitting the, sometimes hitting the C and the G. Okay, then I can also file this down. Because this side of the bridge is kind of arched. Yeah, what I want to do is mark the center line and sand kind of file up to that center line. And 
then you sand a little bit on this side, but not much. Not as much as you want. Because you want to keep this. You kind of just do a slight bevel on this side. Because this side stays totally flat. Because that's the side that you're referencing to see that it's perpendicular to the top, the plane of the top. So you just kind of round it a little bit. So I've totally gotten rid of that slot for the um, C string, my original slot. If I could take off the parchment on that now. I think I'll sand it just to make it kind of clean. gotta figure out exactly where to slot. I want to do it the same that I had. Yeah, so I'm gonna mark it with a dot here. Okay, so the distance between the D and the G I want to do that same distance between the G and the new C slot. Okay, okay. So I'm going to use a knife first just to make the initial slit exacto. Then I'll use my nut, nut filing. So, got to measure that C string. Okay, so I just measured my C string and it's 0 0.04, 41 thousandths. And it says it should be a third of the diameter, no more than a third of the diameter. We'll try that. Okie dokie. Let's kind of clean that up a bit there. Okay, I think I'm ready to try to install it. Oh, the first thing you got to do, of course, is put pencil lead or graphite. One thing I just read last night said use soap, dry soap. Never tried that. Beeswax might work, huh? but it just makes the string kind of slide more easily in the slot. Okay, let's see. Let's put all this away. Okay, the moment of truth. Now I'm going to how should I do this? Um, I guess I'll slide this here. Kind of position it there and slowly loosen this. No. I think I should probably do it this way, huh? Yeah. No, I should put the spreader. This thing. To make sure that the bridge feet are spread the proper amount. What was it, 96, I think?
pressing down with the real bridge to make sure that there's tension on that top. Okay, now I can remove this. And then I can move this up to where it should be. often and checking to make sure that Okay, let's see. Okay, that's, it's in the right position there. Take the tape off. And let's go somewhat tuned, about a whole step below. Check to make sure it's leaning forward a bit. always nerve-wracking trying to move the bridge to straighten it see different people doing it different ways okay let's go and bow it let's see let's tune it <laughs> 